We are starting this video with uh, a strong coffee. We're gonna be spilling the tea all over this video. So welcome back to another video guys. Um, I'm kind of nervous in this video. But to know that everyone might watch this. My primary school teacher, my secondary school security guard, my neighbor is 80 years old, the son-in-law, whoever is gonna watch it. Even Saddam Hussein who's dead right now, is probably gonna be with his popcorn like, mm, this is not a freaking clickbait. This happened. This really happened in my life. So this guy that I met is from church and we met when I was 16. One fine day in a wedding. Only time I have friends other than school was my church friends when I say church friends um, we had a youth fellowship it's kind of a group thing where everyone was around our age so you know we will be a bit more like oh you know so in that group we have a group leader a youth leader they call that on that year that group leader got married so we were planning for the wedding ahead of time like two months before I was assigned to be the girl who was in the reception. I also was uh, in charge of uh, cake delivery girl. <laughs> Whenever they done cutting their cake, the bread and group, so I have to like go and distribute the cake to all the tables. So I remember I was like assigned to these two. What happened was I came back from school late. I supposed to look presentable. So if the wedding is at four, I came back home at three. So I dress up you know very fast and I followed my mom because you know I can't drive I don't have a phone I, don't <laughs> I my mother was so mad at me so I remember I went to church I went to the washroom and I was like look mom you go in first let me get done with my dress and I'll come in by the time I stepped into the door the door was closed guys the church door was closed so obviously in, like in the movie you don't want to open the door when the, ceremony, when the, the wedding is going on you know like then people will be like who is there to stop the wedding I was there till 5.30 sitting outside <laughs> miserably. It was 5.30, everyone was coming out. Everyone means is the youth group was coming out because this is the time where everyone have to get down and dirty. And then uh, there were so many people, right? And I remember I was so frustrated. I was late and I wasn't there with them. You know, we couldn't take pictures and whatnot. And then I took a glance and I saw this one guy was looking at me, like legit staring at me. And I was like, who are you? And I was like, wow, you're cute too. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I, he was cute. But then I was so frustrated and I was talking to my friends. I was like, hey, you know what? I was, you know, like late and whatnot. Sorry, you know. And they was like, it's okay, let's go. We have to go. So I remember I left my mom. I'm like, you know what? Let me go with my friends. Because my friends are not really my age. They are elder to me or something like that. So we drove there. Right when we reached the hall and I came out from the car and I saw this guy was this like, he was like that the entire time and I at this point of time I'm just like this is when I got so hard working I was in a sari guys I took the thing I wrapped it around my hip <laughs> I wrapped it around my hip and I'm like okay let's get down and dirty like who, who, who need help right now so I remember I was arranging that everyone's doing this thing and this guy was like following me if I'm going to that table and he's there to do something to the table probably like arranging the chair or something like that and at this point I'm not stupid right and I know what's going on as I was in the table trying to arrange like that and I'm acting like I didn't see he's there like I'm arranging this thing and I remember he came to my table to the table I was and he was like hi I am oh dang I need to come up with a name <laughs> Pinocchio <laughs> because throughout this entire story he was lying so I'll name him Kin Pinocchio so he was like hi I'm Pinocchio what's your name and I was like hi I'm Renee nice to meet you so we handshake and then I just moved the fuck on and I remember I went to my friend and said hey look this guy who is this guy why is he like doing this and then she said I noticed I noticed then I was like who is this guy then she was like hey you know this new family that came to the church so there was this one guy and three sisters so there are four of them who recently came to the church and they joined our youth group thing she was like I heard he is one of the brother so are you guys in terms? So like basically there's this one guy and three girls that come to the church, right? There's four of them, right? This new guy that was looking at me is one of 
the siblings so basically there are five of them right so the bride and groom came the wedding hall become a bit more like crowded a lot of people are there so from all my other job now my job is to sit and to check you know like when guests are coming in i have to sit and say oh yeah this table yeah this table and then I noticed this guy was like that again so this guy was like taking pictures see why he was taking pictures because his sisters was around me they were there he was taking pictures of them so I was like I was not creeped out or anything like that and then the night wasn't young anymore so this is the time where we deliver the cakes you know <laughs> People cut the cakes and then they ask me to deliver to each and every table. You know, Indian weddings, there are about 600 people. So I need to deliver to each people. I mean, not only me, like few girls too. Then I was walking with my cake, right? With my heels like this. I was like, hmm, okay. And you know, trying to be cute and shit, you know, like in the wedding. He called me from far. He was like, like this, like this. Then I thought like, oh, okay, his table need cake. That's why he's calling me. So I brought the, uh, a cake, a plate of cake. Uh, uh, yeah, a plate of cake to him. Then uh, he was like, oh no, I'm kidding. There's cake. I just want you to come. Then I'm like... Like okay, ha ha ha. Then I went to the table, and this is when I start chilling with my friends, talking to my friends. And again, I was 16. <laughs> I need to go back home. So that time, my parents were there in the wedding, but they were there with their friends. I remember I was walking out with my mom, and we will go to the parking, right? Uh, when we went to the parking, when I'm about to get in the car. And my mom was like, why is the guy following us? When I turned back, it's him. And I was like, I don't know, he's not following us, my motherfuck. But inside, I'm like, oh my lord. Then he didn't manage to do anything. He was just standing outside, you know, like, you know, like, basically like a Bollywood movie. When you meet a girl in the wedding, but then she's about to go home. And then he's like, uh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> to think about it, it's so cringy. You know, it started off damn cute. You guys might think creepy and at the same time, it's like damn cute, but then... Oh wait, I will story you. I went back home. This is when I made one, not one, the only big mistake in my life, okay? I went back home and you know, I was like thinking when I'm sleeping, I'm like, oh, there's a guy, oh, you know, in the wedding and who is he? You know, like trying to put everything together. And I'm like, hmm, I don't have a phone. I don't have nothing, but I have Facebook. <laughs> I found his profile, I'm like, okay, send request <laughs> and I went to school the next day I went to school the next day and I told my friends you know oh, I met this guy in a wedding and he was like you know damn cute he's there like you know so I came back home I just checked I'm like oh that's a friend approval and then I was I have balls guys I, I've, I I don't know why normally I should have let him I know what you know what what I did like hi uh, you were the one in the wedding right then he was like mm, yes it's me like you look beautiful and shit and i'm i'm like thank you and then he was like hey uh so you know like get to know basically cut to the point where we talk for a few weeks or months i don't remember and then we met here and there and then there was my 16th birthday he came to my 16th birthday i invited the sisters um and i asked him to come with them so at this point everyone start doubting that we were talking our first date was so funny this guy is five years older to me so if i was 16 he was 20 around that time 20 or 21 so i was in secondary school and he was in college so at that point he can drive he can do anything that a girl want as a boyfriend like we can go out we can chill we can eat you know everything like that so our first date <laughs> was so funny he came and picked me up from tuition <laughs> he went for like uh, a quick subway break and then we kind of like it was so cute and it was like so like movie thing guys my eyes is closing <laughs> oh i can see perfectly now and one day we decided to talk to each another and i was like what are we hmm? what are we then he was like uh I think we are dating. Uh, I, I I don't mind being. I don't mind making you my girlfriend or some shit like that. I was like, I don't mind you being my boyfriend. <laughs> he was so cringy. So he was in relationship through not text by Facebook message. <laughs> so you know normally how people or girls try to hide it from the family because you know they don't want the family to know or they are scared or something like that. But I wasn't scared. My family is not strict at all didn't cross my mind to talk to my parents it was thrilling you know whenever we go out and i remember you will come to my house and i'll be like mom i'm going for a walk but then i'll be in the car with him talking shit you know i remember i was doing all these things what happened was his sisters when i told okay so basically the pictures there are three girls two guys right he 
and another guy their brothers and another girls their siblings another two is 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 auntie's daughters so basically the story went downhill when i start talking to him i came to know that he has no parents his parents divorced and the mother left him when he was young and the father was alive uh but he passed away a year before i met him three of them he his brother and his sister were living together with his auntie so his sisters with his cousin sister because they are you know fuck it like they are like like this so they went and told the auntie so they went and told like hey you know pinocchio has a girlfriend so the auntie was like oh who is that oh it's from the church so the, the auntie went mm. so i think it's the right thing to go and talk to the mother which is my mother a uh, function going on in the church and we will have the celebration during the celebration they literally came and say hi i am pinocchio's uncle and auntie uh nice to meet you to me and my mother you know and i'm like oh shit oh shit they just came to my mom and say um sister can i can we go out and go out and my mom like yeah sure like yeah why not so at that point my mom don't know why are they calling them out and i'm just there like yo can you guys ask my permission before you guys do this but i was young and i was kind of happy at this point and this is the point where i already done with um secondary school to be honest oh no 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 i'm about to done with my secondary school and then my mom went out with them they didn't bring me or him so they told my mom hi sister uh we heard the news i think there's something going on with your daughter and my uh son kind of so my mom was like ah! no she didn't do that she was like oh really uh, i don't know this and then they went um you know they went so like oh i think we need a good girl we like her so we just um call you out because we we don't want to make things awkward uh since they are going out i think it's time for us to give them a chance you know like i want you to know you know we don't want complications since we are from the same church so they talked and they were okay with it and my mom came home and asked me and i'm like yeah i'm talking to him i remember i told her yeah i'm talking to him and my mom like what do you like him and i'm like i think so i like him this is the time my mom have to go and talk talk to my dad so my dad was like fine with it i remember I had a conversation with him and he was like yo whatever we supposed to do our parents done it already so we are like our line is clear like, you know like two family knows and they like each other and everything like you know like kind of a very brown typical thing at that point i really liked him i i really loved him <laughs> very weird to say that so this was the time where i graduate and this is also the time that i have to find a college all right so pinocchio told me like hey uh if you think about what you're going to do then i'm like yeah i always wanted to do and this is the point where you know typical brown parents say you have to be a doctor and i'm like no hell no uh i want to become a a media person like i want to study for media i want to do journalism i need to do advertising and everything so my parents wasn't really keen about it but then as i told you my parents are not strict at all they are very understanding so they like you know what yeah just go do what you want to do we can't force you what you want to do just go do what you want to do so i was so happy and in my mind i wanted to go to a specific college like i always wanted to go to that college but then you see he okay at this point is a part of the family already he always come to my house he always chill at my house my dad was so comfortable with him my mom was even more comfortable with him my brother loved him so at that point i told you guys that he was in college and yeah that college was kind of well known for communication so my parents literally went hey pinocchio is studying there why don't you go there and study there since it is the best for your course and it is kind of well known at the moment at that moment that college was well known i went back and forth to my parents i'm like you know what i want to go to that college the one i want then they was like you know what this is the best this is the best you know I kind of appreciate that I studied there for another reason but yeah and they enrolled me in the same college that he went. I went to the college and I studied for 4 years. Thank God he wasn't like a very possessive boyfriend and I forgot to tell you guys that that relationship was a best relationship that I had in my life. It was one so comfortable. I he wasn't he, he didn't cheat on me. <laughs> Which I hope he did because whatever he did to me was even more hurtful than 
this to be honest i'm not going to sit here and say oh cheating is even no i'm not i'm sorry if i say that but you really put me in deep shit okay but then yeah you know and i never had the plan to like oh now i'm in a college it's time to look at other guys i didn't have the thing because i was a really serious relationship so i was like you know what i'm set for life i want to go college have fun make friends and you know academically go somewhere so i remember i had so much fun in the college i studied and i was in scholarship <laughs> Yeah, I, I was I was having the time of my life. Uh, that's when me and my parents we went to to Kerala for holiday, and uh, it's in India. So when we back from that Kerala trip, my father had this um, thing where suddenly his body shut down. We were going back and forth for my father's um, health. So we there are times that we have to send him to the hospital and whatnot. Within that year so it was a very hard time for me so throughout the entire time when i was with him i dated him for four and a half years so during the first three years my that was the hardest time i ever had in my life everyone have a phase in their life where it is kind of shitty right it is like the worst phase ever and i had that phase when i was with him there were three incidents happen in my life back to back to back i wasn't myself i remember so he put up with a lot of things in my life i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sit here and act like oh i'm a saint i'm an angel no what really happened is in the second year i was dating him uh my best friend my best friend since childhood he passed away he went um he uh he had a accident and he passed away and that was the first ever time in my life that i know what it means by someone leaving your life it's not fight leave it's not that i'm going to talk to you anymore you're my enemy it's not that when you can't do anything to see that person again you know that's when i that's Oh my god guys I, I i if you guys want i will do a story time in that and then the second year is when i lost my father um it was even more worse because the next year itself i lost my dad so it my life was like and it was the final year of my college and everything was upside down i don't know what would have happened if he wasn't there for me throughout everything so managed to graduate my diploma only my diploma at the beginning and yeah at that point he have stopped studying because of some financial issue um as i told you guys he don't have parents he have to work to study you know he have to work to eat he have to work. he is he, basically independent by his own at that point so that's one of the criteria when i see like hey you don't have parents but then you're working for yourself so i'm like oh and i supposed to go london i when my father was alive the plan was right after i i was done i supposed to go london for to do my degree my mom was alone and that's the time where i think like hey this is not the right time for me to fly away from the country where i'm going to leave my mom to suffer like that because it's just a few months i already graduated so that's when i took a decision i told myself like look as much as i want to go away and you know experience new things in life i was like no let me stay here with my mom let me sacrifice a part of my life and just study here instead i think kind of make him happy a bit because he wasn't like hey don't go i will miss you no he didn't say that he's more of like go do what you want kind of person but yeah and i thought like hey i have someone already you know my mom is alone you know blah 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 so that means i didn't go overseas but then i told my mom like look i don't want to be in the same uni or college that i just graduate for diploma i want to go somewhere else so that's when i joined a uni that i always interested in remember the one i wanted to go in the beginning so she was a perfect mom she did what i said she enrolled me in the new um university at this point my father was my father wasn't around so it's always been me my mom and him as i told my brothers they have their business so they are always out and about they are always traveling so it was like a male figure 
in the house when my brothers are not around he literally put the trust in him he was everything at that point my mom did a slight mistake but she told me hey since you're already 21 and you are in a very stable relationship and we know Pinocchio is a nice He's a nice guy, everyone knows him. Why don't you just get married to him? And I don't know, a part of me, as much as I want to spend my life with him, I was like, no mom, I'm still young. I, I, I don't want to get married now. Like, give it some years. So guys, this is what I want to tell you. I forgot to tell you guys this. So when my father passed away on his deathbed, he held my hand and his hand and said, Pinocchio, please don't leave Rini. Um, I'm leaving her to you, um, take care of her, take care of the family and then he was talking to my brother and then he passed away. One of the moments that I will never forget in my life is my, la my father's last word was with him. So that even made me like, you know what, like obviously a girl whenever she want to get married to a guy, any girl can relate to this. Whenever she want to get married to a guy, she's probably going to have a lot of vision, she want to have the guy to have a perfect relationship with the family which I got uh, for the father to trust the guy which I totally my mom was getting kind of okay from the loss uh, my dad so we were minding our own business I went to a new university I was there and he was working so basically PDQ, um he studied for architecture I guess in interior designing something like that and he is very smart when it comes to landscaping business so he had his own landscaping business it's not a big one but it's a startup like it's up and running so uh at that point i was like all right this guy have something to do with his life and i'm studying and then um <laughs> this is my dumb ass this is when shit about to go down right so we had a lot of trust in him. My brother's like, oh, Alex is there always to take care of my sister and my mom. So we were just check in once in a while and everything. My relationship with my brothers, we are like legit friends. They take care of me like a princess, you know, like, no, 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 no. So there's a lot of trust involved in this entire situation. Okay, this is what happened, right? So I remember one day, um, well, I stay with my mom and he stay with his auntie. We kind of meet every day to be honest, every day. So there are days he will take dinner in my house, something like that. My mom and him, they are best friends. I'm not kidding guys, they are freaking best friends. They go movie together, literally hang out together. Sometimes if I'm busy, they will go and hang out together. So my mom loved him so much. So there was this one time my mom, oh my god, I'm putting this out there. So I'm not telling the name, right? So one day my mom like, hey Pinocchio, I need to <laughs> I need to go out and get something for my cousin brother. You know how it is like, hey, it's their birthday, I need to go buy them a ring, alright? So this is where a story like this, it turned to like this, very quick, okay? Hey Pinocchio, uh, can we go and get something, like a ring, like a gold ring? Would you follow me? And then he was like, yeah auntie, let's go. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm chill guys, I'm, I'm going out with my friends. So I'm, I'm out with my friends, Pinocchio and my mom went to buy the ring. They got the ring, not one ring I guess, like for my brother, my mom, uh, and then <laughs> I don't know what uh, So she bought like two to three rings and then came back home and um, wait, I need to do this in order for me to see. <laughs> Everything like that, okay? So this is the ring matter, I stop it there. So I continue with a different thing first. One fine day when I'm about to sleep, it's about like 11. I still remember this vividly when I'm about 11. I'm about to sleep and he was like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm about to sleep. And he was like, I need to talk to you. Um, let me pick you up. Let's go to MACD very quick. Then I'm like, why? Then he was like, let me, let's go to MACD. I need to talk. And he sounds, and he sounded so like, I don't know, disturbed. Then I'm like, okay, let's go. He went to MACD and his face was totally not him. So it was like, you know one thing, um, there's a chain, gold chain, oh my god, I can't imagine I'm telling this. There's a gold chain of my, of his auntie that went missing, like went missing. And I'm like, okay, okay, this is, we don't have drama guys, keep in mind, there's no drama in my life like this. And I'm like, Maybe your auntie put it somewhere. This is why you call me at 11 o'clock, is it? Then he was like, no, it's legit missing. And guess what? I'm like, what? They are blaming it on me. And I'm like, 
what and i was like why because guys that auntie and uncle love him so much like love all the siblings so they are like a family then he was telling me you know what i i, I keep telling them like they might be a rat in the house <laughs> they might be a rat in the house that actually took the chain and went somewhere and at that point i'm like is he dumb or am i dreaming it's 11 o'clock i should be asleep by now but i remember he's telling me all this and i remember stupid enough to think like maybe it's right I, i i know you guys will be looking at me like i'm stupid but i thought it was maybe like why he have to take it he don't have to you know why am i telling this first is because i will tell you the second story the second story this story that i'm about to tell happened one week before one week before so this is it's like movie i don't know why am i even doing this this is what happening now right so one week before this thing happened all right the house that we are currently living is kind of like a corner house and it's not guarded property or anything like that so we are always concerned about robbery and shit like that this is the part where you guys going to probably like rini you you dated a criminal so one day i came back from college i don't know why i'm always coming back from college on the way home he called me and he was like hey where are you at and i'm like i'm coming back home it's about 6 o'clock and he was like no don't come home meet me in the macd um that's the macd near my house meet me in the macd i want to buy you chicken nuggets then i'm like i don't want chicken nuggets then he was like no i feel like buying you chicken nuggets then no i'm like right chicken nuggets no i <laughs> then i went to the macd and i was sitting there sitting there guys and then half an hour later is like hey rini you know what mom could come home and as i'm driving back home that's the time i remember my mom came back home from somewhere he is coming back home and i am going home so basically three of us are coming home in the same time so i'm like all right so weird mom did you cook then she say yeah for me brother oh i just told his name <laughs> I went into the house. I straight went to shower. My room is a corner room in the house. Before we even renovate this house, there was this door that lead to the main. It is one of the entrance that anyone can come into the house. So guys, you guys have no idea. I came to my room and I saw the door was open because I saw three hours was coming to the house at the same time, right? I was, I saw the door was open. I freaked out and I scream and I run down. So recently, my mom was. telling him hey uh, pinocchio the roof is leaking la she she said hey pinocchio a few weeks ago she said pinocchio the roof is leaking i need your help to like go and check the roof then pinocchio was like oh yeah auntie i will check it out check it out but then he didn't he's like trying to procrastinate that shit so on that day specifically when we are all about to go into the house because the first thing i do is i want to go shower because i'm after uni right so he was like uni you go shower i want to check the roof so he took the ladder from outside to go on the roof right when i'm about to reach the my room inside so he was like auntie someone came to the house someone broke into the house like i was like what the fuck is happening like why is he on the roof like what the fuck now i found out that my mother asked him to do this thing few weeks ago and he's doing it now and keep in mind it was 7 o'clock right 7 o'clock at night who the fuck will be in the roof right this is If you are watching from other country, I don't know how is your house, but then Malaysia's Malaysian house, we have this um square thing that you can go into the roof from your house. If you know what I'm talking about, it will be a square thing in your ceiling. So that was open on the second floor of my house. So we were freaking out. Me and my mom were literally freaking out. We we're like, oh shit, someone came into the house. Everything like that. Neighbors are all damn nice people. So they came in. They were like, who is this? The house. They're trying to find things and everything. But no, rob, no sign for any robber or thief in the house. So they were like, I think he ran away or some shit like that. But then we had a doubt because our whole house is clean. Is it's like clean. It's like perfect. So everyone has a doubt where maybe the thief. just came in he saw people are coming to the house then he ran away later our neighbor say go and complain just in case uh, because we didn't go through all our things at that point whether it is missing or no so i went to the police station 3 hours went to the police station when i'm at the police station i remember he was sitting in the corner because you see i'm not trying to be like oh it's a guy it's a girl thing but You are like a man figure at that moment so you are the one that's supposed to come and talk to the police but I was doing 
the work like i was talking to the police i was telling like this 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 and i remember he was just sitting there and watching me doing the entire thing and i and i'm also like frustrated at that point because i have like few cameras in my room so i didn't check anything whether it's missing or not or like all we did was we saw the house was open so we straight went to the police station so we came home we came home it's time for him to go home because you know he checked whether everything is safe or not and then when he checked uh, as we were checking and as my mom was experimenting the entire thing she like how can a thief can jump into the ceiling like it is not dirty if someone is jumping from up there it should be dirty you know like you know she was doing some things like you know like some experiment and everything and then she was like okay you know it's a long day let me go and take a shower so when she took a shower for some reason remember when i start the story by telling that they went to bought the rings two to three rings right the ring was missing guys it was three of the rings were missing this incident happened right and then a week later this chain thing happened and i'm like what is going on why this two weeks is so strange like why is your auntie chain is going missing and my house got just broke into and remember the auntie that lost the chain so she called my mom at that point i was so i'm not, not say i'm so mad at that um auntie i was like yo you know i always cared for him because his life is a bit more complicated than a normal teenager life so i tried to be like um i'm not saying the best girlfriend <laughs> I try to be understanding as possible. So when he told me this thing happened when the own auntie is suspecting of him and I'm like, yo auntie you shouldn't do that. By the way, my mom don't know that this chain went missing because he only met me the other night. So my mom don't know. I never I normally don't tell my mom things um if it's happening between me and Pinocchio. They brought a a thing, okay? Imagine this is like a vintage jewelry box vintage jewelry box all right it's like the heavy one the metal one all right they were carrying this and coming to the house and i'm like what's going on right so they came in they were like hi how are you hello auntie blah 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 blah, blah. then it was like uh, they told my mom the uncle told my wife chain went missing um gold chain by the way and mom like oh really how you know how because she don't know anything no you know what sis a look at this jewelry box it's heavy right can a rat uh open this and bring the chain and go away then my mom like my mom was like huh what what is going on now we kind of doubting that pinocchio took it my mom's reaction was my reaction in the mcd so I, my mom was like i was like good luck mom <laughs> the auntie and uncle literally went to my mom and be like sis uh this is not the first time mm just imagine i'm just sitting there and listening to this shit I don't know at that point what to do. I was shocked, I was confused. I was I that time I don't feel betrayed because it was like a lightning. It's like you know we che <laughs> fucking Bollywood like that, huh? Um you know obviously it was like you know the you know the Bollywood movie got like <laughs> that's what I felt. I was like what the fuck? What kind of climax is this? This is not the first time uh this thing had happened before. Mm, Pinocchio actually did this did that. I'm not going to really say what he did, but then he have done few shits in his life before which they thought it was um a growing up thing. So at this point at that time they were telling everything about him, who he is, who he really was, who they thought he changed into, who they think he is now right after the thing went missing. what they think about me and what should i know now i'm just like bitch what the fuck i was like shocked and i remember on that night itself my mom came up to me and my mom said remember the the night when the night when my house we thought the the, the thief came in right so my mom went to shower and that night she found out the ring went missing and she had doubt doesn't make sense she's like why would a thief come to the house take the bag open the bag take the ring and then close the bag and then hang the bag you know like the thief don't have to see cleanliness what the thing don't have to like oh i need to clean the house before i go from that day my mom was trying to tell something to me but i wasn't paying attention because at one point i need to see my boyfriend who is going through this shit i have to see my college i have to see a lot of things around me so she didn't really bother me but you know what guys 
she already knew that it was Pinocchio for some reason because as I told we all came in the same time right from 1 to 6 Pinocchio called her 6 times minimum 6 times she's like auntie where, where are you auntie are you coming back home are you coming back home around what time you'll be home auntie blah blah blah, blah. then she said to me that he has never called her that much but that day he called her so many times to ask whether she would be back home soon or not so now you understand where he called me not to come home to buy MACD and then he said come back home mom cook you, you guys know in the one to six when i'm at college my mom went out with her friends he did a spare key and he came into the house he opened the door he came to the thing he took the ring he went off he closed the door he opened the thing that's when when we came at six o'clock he went on the roof and he moved the roof and he screamed from up he was like auntie someone came into the house through the roof there are some things that we put together uh, because the policeman came to the house and I mean we didn't say but the policeman like how did who how do you guys think that the thief came in so we are like we thought is this then he, he was like yeah. I think the police was also shocked they're like from the looks of it no one jumped from down and we don't know how this door is open it's basically someone jumped and ran away through here but in the first place someone didn't jump from here so the police was like done with our bullshit so we basically forget but my mom didn't she had the doubt like yo why did you call me so many times why is the house like that why were you not there with Rini when she is reporting to the police why so as a mom she already put everything together but she didn't tell me because she don't want to hurt me at the same time she, he was going through something in his house so when the auntie and uncle came to the house and told us about their story their chain story and their freaking past whatever he did that's when when they go back my mom sit down with me and said you know what i suspect it was pinocchio and till at that moment i was trying to protect him i was like no ma they are probably heartbroken because the chain went missing or something and then my mom like literally knocked she never knocked she's like are you stupid how can you run <laughs> take a chain and go away Did, are you stupid is your boyfriend stupid you know something like that that's when i'm like oh my god yeah like a wreck so i remember my mom sit and talk to me i cried i i was considered mind fucked at that moment mind fucked from his family from my mom from him i was like literally imagine thinking someone so good and then you find out that that person is not what you think he is he is like a different person you know like he was acting the four years with you you know like that remember i took the decision to not look at him on that day i don't know why it's not that i hate him i was disgusted i was beyond disgusted i've never done this in my life if i'm angry with someone if i'm upset with someone i would want to confront them obviously in this point i didn't want to confront him i didn't want to even look at his face i stopped talking to him i stopped answering his call i stopped texting him he got so possessed he came to the house the next day and he don't want to go back home he was like i want to see rini he was like a freaking psycho i'm sorry to tell you this but my mom got scared i told you guys my mom was so close to him she got scared at one point she came to inside the house she locked the door she was like he's not going back and he was standing outside my house for like four to five hours he was like i want to see rini i want to see rini i want to see rini now auntie auntie i want to see rini he was like repeating he wasn't angry he was calm you know when a serial killer want to kill you they're like today i'm going to kill you um because i'm bored i don't know but um let me go and get my screwdriver you know like this kind of scary calm tone he was like that and i remember i was so afraid i didn't go to class for a few days because i know he won't do anything to me uh, i didn't tell my brothers but my mom told my brothers and my brothers came down they were here for a while and then later we found out he was following me for a month guy he was following me here and there follow my car follow me to college follow me when my friends are around follow me to the mall everyone found out and later my brothers have to like keep i mean this sounds even more worse i don't want to make it worse my brother has to make sure that i'm safe my brother has to tell their friends and their groups that um be careful of my sister there's this guy and everything it it went it literally went to that point but then later on after a few months i feel like 
he wasn't in my life he wasn't calling me and he wasn't texting me he vanished at one point my brother treated him like he's one of them and another day they just have to warn him like stop calling my sister uh, when they found out that everything happened so they were like devastated basically everyone was devastated <laughs> looks like everyone was going through the breakup it's not like a typical breakup you know it's not like the guy cheat on you so people know how to to tell to that person like oh you deserve someone way better uh, he's a trash normal advice but when this thing happened i can understand that my family couldn't say anything else they were just there for me every time but they didn't get to open their mouth and say he's a trash or you deserve someone better because they couldn't say the word you deserve someone better because they know for a fact that i'm not going to trust anyone but he definitely ruined something for sure where he made me think that i shouldn't trust anyone which is such a wrong thing which i'm until now going through it when i meet someone i am just i don't know it's not only that trust it's like any other trust i because i've seen someone who acted like perfectly fine for four years someone can act up to six months but no one can act up to four years whatever happened may sound like mm, okay but there's another thing happened remember he came to my house and he acted like psycho he was like no auntie i want to see rini i want to see rini and at th that part right my mom settled everything and when she came in she laughed and she said you know what he said he said he will get you back or he will no it's not like that he will probably come back to you after a few years when he proved himself i don't know what you want to prove later so he kept telling my mom like i'll come back auntie i'll come back i'll come back and i'll bring greenie you know like something like that my mom like hell no so everything was normal and it already been a year I totally forgot about this guy i'm still in uni doing my last year until i went to the bank with my mom one day and basically long story short we had a certain amount which is only for auto deduction when it comes to my insurance so i was like all right they need auto deduction signature from the me or something keep in mind this account that i'm talking about that has this much of amount was opened when i was with pinocchio so um i remember when i was with pinocchio i went to the bank with my mom we cash deposit 10k into the account and we know that one day we're going to auto that auto deduct it but that time we paid it annually so basically that's not the time to do the auto deduction so after a few years it's time to do the auto deduction and they need my signature to do it to link the account to the insurance blah 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 i went to the bank to do the auto deduction me my mom and my insurance agent the time when we opened the bank account the bank asked me do you need a debit card or do you need online banking and i said no nope, i don't need anything for this account because it is going to be an auto deduction i ain't gonna do any transaction any any transfer anything in this account this is going to be a account that monthly it automatically deducts by itself so no one is handling this account so when i opened this account i only took the book no debit card no online banking i went to the counter i went to the counter i give the book and i'm like mm, i want to make it to the auto debit for insurance so the guy the lady said good morning okay it's my time so she like T -t 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 -t. and then she put the book inside i don't know if you guys know what i mean she wanted to update the book obviously and and my mom like okay la update la no one touch the money what we never take out what right and then when she updated guys guess what when she updated the thing went zzz, <laughs> the thing went like laser zzz. then he's like mm I don't think so you can do auto deduction is because from 10000 your bank account has 50 ringgit right now she gave the book to me like this you only have 50 ringgit right now um i don't think so you have 10000 are you dreaming bitch i turned to my mom and i was like mom got 50 ringgit only left i went to the bank lady and i was like it shouldn't be 50 ringgit because i don't have a debit card to this account i was so angry at this point to the bank because look i don't have a online banking i don't have a debit card and the only way i can take out money is from the book itself right so 
imagine when you're about to take money from the book every time when you take money they will update the book so when i first gave the book to the lady it was clean it says first transaction 10,000 she said you sure you don't have for online banking then i said yeah i don't have but why we see here got online banking and then i think the bank lady know i was so confused and i'm so like she can see from my face itself so she was like okay calm down what you have to do is since you are this is not the bank for you to check you have to go to the bank that is in your area the next day i went to that bank she refers to when i went to the bank that's when they give me the report transaction report so basically they ask who is pinocchio then i'm like pinocchio why ah? they was like this is the name that this money has been transferred to then i'm like what guys keep in mind uh, this is a year later you know a year later during this day it's like 1500 200 300 400 so the date that it got transferred to are the dates that i was with him as you guys know i opened the bank account when i was with him during that time he created an online banking guys you know the time where i went to the bank with my mom right so i came i put my bank book here and there this is when i learned how to keep things properly not to put it everywhere me looking at his phone or he looking at my phone is not a big deal we don't look at each another's phone just because we want a phone who are you talking to it's just an understanding thing hey can i lose, use your phone for a while or hey i want to make a call my phone has no line you know shit like this he created an online banking when he was with me he created under my name obviously i have to create under my name he took the bank account number and whenever he okay whenever i tell this me telling this story time makes me look like i'm making this up but guys no this is real life this is what happened to me this all look like it will come out in a movie but no every time till now my family members will make fun of me they will say look since you're doing youtube video why don't you do a short film of your life because he take the book he get the account number he get my phone so he did the online banking so every time when you do a transaction when, when every time you do it with me obviously you will be like hey can i get your phone i need to do some calls so he take the he take the tsc number he delete the message so that's how he do it until there's 50 bucks right so that's when my family called so mad we went and confronted him after a year so i'm not going to say how we confronted him or what we how it went so yeah it was black and white it was his name and we told that we're going to complain to the police but he said no i'm sorry i've done mistake and everything like that so he paid back we make him pay back the entire ten thousand. i was too traumatized guys after year by year i got traumatized my brother's friend passed away then my father then my grandpa and then he broke my heart and then the fifth year again i found out another thing and then the second relationship ended because i wanted it to end because i couldn't trust anyone and i was going through something so if you stay through the entire story now you know a part of me that i always never want to say to people but i'm opening up i guess i am sharing more things i've always been so freaking personal in my life i don't like to tell certain things out but this is one of the things that i never want to tell out now i'm sitting here never thought i'm gonna ever record this story and put it out there but i am right now so you will never know what life gonna give you one day i heard a similar news that happened to another girl and then i heard another one and then i heard another one i'm not lying i keep hearing something like this and i was like oh my god it's not only happening to me it's happening to few other girls or few other guys out there i'm not trying to say it's only happened to girl and it comes to a point where i think that this shouldn't be a secret this can be a story maybe the people who are watching this maybe you can be young maybe you can be old maybe you can be in the 20s or 30s two things i want to say here it's okay to have doubt and it is not okay to have doubt also so you should know the limit and sometimes there are more genuine people out there than there are people like this but however thank you for listening if you are staying till now or listening till now thank you so much make sure to subscribe make sure to share this video if you have someone who went through the same thing because i know how it feel 
to be the person who went through this because we don't want to tell this out not because we don't want to share it's because we have accumulated that we was with someone like this that we are not magically smart enough to know that they are like this person and yeah see you guys in the next video very soon bye